Good morning, YouTube, booktube. This is Johnny. Thought I'd make a video. It's a Sunday morning here in Southwest Michigan. It is April the 7th, 2024. It is 9.49 in the morning. Yeah, I'm just sitting here in the dining room. This is, I usually sit in the dining room where I write in my diary. This morning I'm on page 313 for the year 2024. And yeah, it's a sunny day. Things are slowly getting green and blooming out there, but still kind of brown. Before I know it, I'll have to be out there mowing the lawn again. We're going to get a new lawnmower. And uh, we're going to get an electric lawnmower. You know how much electric lawnmowers cost? <laughs> they cost around $500. Our son, our oldest son lives down the street. And he bought an electric lawnmower. And I used it last summer and it was really great. And uh, we have a, an old gas lawnmower that we bought, I don't know, years ago. Maybe at least, maybe it's almost like uh, t over 20 years. And uh, I'm not really into lawns. <laughs> I'm not really into mowing lawns. Uh, even last night, Carol said, we should just get some, get lawn service and have it just done pay someone to mow our lawn and do the you know get a there's, there's a guy on the corner he's a doctor and he has people who come in and mow his lawn and take care of his plants and garden maybe we should just do that we have the money but anyway i thought what i'd do this morning it's a new week it's the first day of a new week and uh, i made a video the other night of my John Barth collection because John Barth, one of America's great writers, uh, recently passed away. And he's someone I read when I was really young. Now I'm really old. <laughs> but, so I, yeah, I, col I started col collecting John Barth when I got back into reading secular literature. Like I've always said, for many years I read Reformed Theology because I was going to be a minister of the Gospel and and I was raising a family, we were raising a family and there was just no time for extra reading and plus I was at just a different place in my own intellectual and spiritual life. Now even when I was in seminary in Jackson, Mississippi, I bought William Burroughs' uh, Junkie, and I bought a biography on Jack Kerouac, uh, and I had On the Road by Jack Kerouac, and Desolation Angels by Jack Kerouac. I had beat books with me when I was in seminary back in the 80s. But, and when I, we moved to Houston, Texas, to do my internship, I bought beat books and but and we had a library, a, a local library, right just a block from where we lived there in Houston, Texas. And I could walk over there and I read a lot of John Irving in those days and uh, so I was always reading secular literature but I didn't really get collecting secular literature until around 2007. Many years ago, there used to be a big, huge used book sale here in Holland at the Civic Center every year around September. But they don't do that anymore. And I used to go to those and get a lot of used books. And then I told you I volunteered at the local library used bookstore, uh, the Book Nook. And somebody asked me in a comment the other day, when's the Book Nook going to open again? Well, as far as we know, the book nook, the library used bookstore, won't open until maybe September 2024. It was supposed to be April 
and then it was supposed to be May, and then they said August, and now they say September 2024. And I'll probably go back if they want, they need volunteers, I'll go back. But for many years, I worked, I volunteered there twice a week, two hours on Mondays, two hours on Fridays. And I always went to the Friends of the Library to use book sale, and when donations came in at the book nook, the library used bookstore, I always had first look at the books, and I bought a lot of used books volunteering at the book nook over the many years, I, over at least, over at least 10 years. And uh, so I bought a lot of books. And I'm not really, I, I'm, I primarily, I tell people I read Christian literature because I'm a Christian and I like, I like reading and studying the scriptures, the Bible. You know, I went to Bible college, I went to seminary, I have a Master's of Divinity degree, and, uh, and I'm a bookworm. <laughs> So yeah, but I've all, now I read, now in August of this year, I'll be 72 years old and I've always been in, into books and um, I, I, you know, I worked for 15 years and, and I stopped working in 2007 and then I just started reading outside of Christian literature. After, you know, I, like I've shown you over the years, you know, I got into 17th century English Puritans, Reformed theology, New Testament theology, Old Testament theology, biblical commentaries, it just goes on and on. And then I, and I told you my schedule, how I, how I read each day, is I read in the mornings, I read Christian literature. And this morning I finished reading The Ascent of Mount Carmel by St. John the Cross. I don't think I'm going to read any more of this. I, I thought about reading The Dark Knight next, but I don't think so. I think I'm kind of had my mystical theology for the year. And then I'm almost finished reading The Transfiguration of Christ, an exegetical and theological reading by Patrick Schneider, Schmeiner. Yeah, I only got, oh, how much pages? Probably six pages left in this. So I read this, and then I've been reading in the mornings an introduction to Medieval Bible by Franz Van Lira. This, I've read 85 pages. And I'm almost done with Taught by God, Ancient Hermeneutics for the Modern Church. Yeah, I've only got maybe 15 pages left in this. And the print's kind of big, you know, it's, it's not small print, it's big print. So Taught by God. Yeah, when I was in seminary, you take hermeneutics as how do you, uh, how do you, uh, interpret the Bible. <laughs> and of course, over church history the last 2,000 years, you have medieval exegesis, patristic exegesis, reformation exegesis, hermeneutics, things like that. And uh, reading uh, scripture, the Genesis of Doctrine, volume one, Doctrine and Scripture in the Early Christianity by Francis M. Young. I haven't really been reading this last week, but I plan to get back into it because I started reading it this last year and I ordered volume two, pre-ordered it. I'm still reading this even though it's kind of dry and really, too, really academic for me. Christ the Sinner, How the Rule of Faith, the Noma, Sacra, Numerical Patterns Shape the Canon by Timaeus. Brachta, you know, he's a Norwegian scholar, New Testament. Well, I don't know if he's a New Testament. Associate Professor of New Testament at 
NLA University College in Bergen, Norway, and lecturer in New Testament at the University of Aberdeen in Scotland. This is kind of dry, but I didn't know what it was when I bought it, even though it cost me, how much did it cost me? It was an expensive book. But sometimes, you know, sometimes you get a dud. <laughs> well, not a dud. Something that you buy and then you realize it's way over your head. And, uh, but I still will just read parts of it that I can understand. Anyway, I got that. And then I read a sermon the other day, The Blessing of God, previously unpublished sermons of Jonathan Edwards, edited by Michael N. McMullen. Yeah, I read one of the sermons out of here the other day, uh, Sermon 1, The Way to Obtain the Blessing of God. I noticed that when I read the sermon, I can see why it was never published because what you find is these sermons that basically were just sermon notes that Edwards wrote and there were never completed manuscripts of sermons. So when you read a sermon, it abruptly it comes to an end or it doesn't have a certain kind of structural flow to it, but it's still, it's still interesting. I'm not sure. I, I bought this book because I wanted to a sermon I came across in a devotional book that we, my wife and I have been reading. And it says it was an unpublished sermons of Jonathan Edwards. So I ordered, I thought it was in this volume. And then I realized after he did this volume, he did a volume two of the un, previously unpublished sermons of Jonathan Edwards. And in that volume two, is the sermon I really wanted to have and to, re and to have it in my library. But I'm not in the mood right now to get into Jonathan Edwards, so maybe some other day I'll read this, order the second volume of the unpublished sermons of Jonathan Edwards. So I read this stuff in the mornings, and then in the afternoons I've been reading, uh, I read this like last night, I showed you this, uh, City Poet, the Life and Times of Frank O'Hara by Brad Gooch. Uh, yeah, I read, I've been reading this pretty steadily. And I got out to look at a book I came across. I was looking at this book last night. Uh, Frank O'Hara, he went to Harvard and he was what we call, he was a homosexual, but he was low-keyed about it <laughs> back in there in the, oh, right after the Second World War, maybe late 40s, early 50s. And there's a chapter about the homosexuality at Harvard. I got out last night in my library, The Crimson Letter. Harvard Homosexuality and the Shaping of American Culture by Douglas Shan Tusi. I can't pronounce his name. I got this out last night while I was reading it down the lower level and I got, it's on my table desk and I was reading the section in here about uh, Frank O'Hare but I wanted to read some more of this to d maybe this week. He also, in this book, he mentioned this book, which I have in my library, and I got it out to look at, and maybe I'll get back into uh, reading. I think I read this a number of years ago. It's called The Making of the New York School of Poets by David Lehman. The Last Avant-Garde, The Making of the New York School of Poets by David Lehman. And I, well, I got this out because it goes into the, because Frank O'Hara was one of the, the New York School of Poets. And so I got these out to look at this week. And I'm still reading uh, 
the freaks came out to write the definitive history of the village voice the radical paper that changed american culture by Tr Teresa romano yeah i'm still reading this in the afternoons and uh, i one of the women who wrote for the village voice she wrote uh this book that I got in the mail last week, it's called The Voice, Life at the Village Voice, an unauthorized, unauthorized account by Helen Frankfurt. There's a picture of her. Yeah, she, she talks about her, she goes into the history of the Village Voice, what it was like writing for the Village Voice, what it was like, and this came out in 1976. So it goes into the 70s. The Village Voice was started in the 50s. The time you get towards the 70s, it was a whole different time in New York City and the Village Voice was bought it was sold and it was bought and it was it just changed the whole culture of the village voice and she goes into it so i've been reading this along with this and i'm still reading the slip the new york city street that changed american cult art forever robert indiana ellsworth kelly angus martin james rosenquist Dolphin Searing, Leonor Tawney, and Jack Ungerman, Art History and Biography by Prudence Piper. Yeah, I'm really enjoying reading this and I plan to read it through this week. And I'm still reading The Vagabond's Life on the Streets of 19th Century London by Asgard Jensen. Still reading the diaries of Don Powell, 1931 to 1965. Still reading the biography of Don Powell by Tim Page, who uh, edited introduction Tim Page to her diaries. I got this book in the mail last week and I've been reading it pretty steadily in the afternoons and evenings. Uh, I came across this on Amazon, and I'm a big fan of the New York Review Books. As you all know, the New York Review Books Classics is called Born Under Saturn. Uh, a ca the character and the conduct of artists, a documented history from antiquity to the French Revolution by Margaret and Rudolph Wins Wiskauer. Yeah, I really have been enjoying reading this. So I've been reading it pretty steadily. I've read oh, 140 pages of this. Uh, yeah, I'm really, it just, I came across this. I was watching a YouTube video of the guy who started the New York review classics back in the 90s and he mentioned earlier books that they had published and this is one of them this one came out in it was copyrighted in 1963 and this edition came out in well, what's it say this one came out Oh, I don't see any date. 2007. So I've been reading this, and I'm still reading Jonathan Latham's novel, The Arrest, a dystopia novel. Yeah, I'm almost finished with it. I read this off and on throughout the week. So these are the things I'm reading in the afternoons and evenings. Jonathan Latham, The Arrest, Born Under Saturn, 
Margaret and Rudolph Wittenhauer, a biography on Don Powell by Tim Page, Don Powell's Diaries, The Vagabond's Life on the Streets in 19th Century London by Jensen, The Slip by Prudence Piper, The Voice, Life at the Village Voice, an unauthorized account by Helen Frankfurt. There's a picture of her. The Freaks That Came Out to Write. The Definitive History of the Village Voice. City Poets, The Life and Times of Frank O'Hare by Brad Gooch. We'll be looking at this week, off and on, The Last and Vanguard, The Making of the New York School of Poets. We'll be looking at the Crimson Letter, Harvard Homosexuality Shaping American Culture by Douglas Shan Tusti. I can't pronounce his name. So that's what I'll be looking at in the afternoons and the evenings, writing in my diary. I don't I have a book coming in the mail, a novel this week by Dark High Press. I still have used books from thrift stores down the lower level I have not shown. Maybe I'll do that during maybe Monday or Tuesday, those used books. But I just want to show you the things I've been reading in the mornings and what I read in the afternoons and the evenings and when I'm not writing in my diary or watching the birds or talking to my wife. I don't really go anywhere except thrift stores. Uh, I just kind of live a kind of a solitary life. I'm kind of, I've always kind of been a loner, a non-conformist. I'm not part of the... I don't... I'm kind of just into writing and reading and praying and seeking the Lord and waiting for the second coming of Christ. That's just basically it. And... Uh, we have our granddaughters come down. Our oldest son has two little girls, Josie and Cora. They come down and hang out with Nani. And, but it's pretty quiet, which I really, I, now you know I don't have peace and quiet because I have tinnitus in my ear. So there's a constant buzzing all the time. And, you know, the world gets to me, what's going on in the Gaza, what's going on in Ukraine, what's going on in Washington, D.C., presidential elections, global warming, earthquakes, fires, hurricanes, tornadoes, massive starvation, plagues, volcanoes erupting, just all signs of the end times. So what you got to do is you just got to look up and say, come quickly, Lord Jesus. <laughs> so I'll close. I mean, I want to finish reading this morning. I want to finish reading The Transfiguration of Christ. I finished The Ascent of Mount Carmel. Uh, yeah, I, I got a Christian book coming into the, ma into the month, a big massive thing on the doctrine of sin, which I'll probably get into. So I hope you had a good reading weekend, that you have a good new reading week. Thank you for subscribing. You know, the other night my wife had her neighborhood, her woman, the neighborhood women's book club, and they all met here in the dining room. There were about six or seven women who live on our block. And uh, I offered them to hey, you want to see my library? You know, I thought, oh, they're all been to books. And none of them took up my offer to come down into the lower level and see my library. And, you know, that's how people are. You think all oh, people are really into books and they really love books and they're really into libraries. That's not really true. People, uh, like, you know, I just showed you, I'm, how I'm, I told them I'm reading over 10 books and they were all kind of amazed. What? You're reading, when do you have time to sleep? 
And I thought to myself, wait a minute, aren't you reading 10 books? <laughs> but, uh, of course, I don't read, I read one book, you know, I'll read this one day, and the next day I'll read this, and then the next day I'll read this, and plus I read maybe one, I might read this for an hour, and then I'll read this for two hours, and then I'll read this an hour, and then I'll read this for an hour. You know, I don't read them all day long. And if you read over a period of time, a month, if, and you read maybe 10, 15 pages a day of a certain book, you, you get done with it by at least in two months' time. So I don't know. I'm always amazed that people say, well, how do you have time to read? And then you notice they're always on their cell phones, where they're watching TV, or they're doing other things, just wasting time. See, uh, they sit down and they talk to somebody for three hours about nothing. <laughs> and they could have spent those three hours reading, or they spent an hour watching some TV show. They could have read for an hour. That's why I stopped watching TV years ago. I said, why watch TV? I can spend those hours watching TV, reading and writing. And so I stopped watching TV a number of years, many years ago, I don't. And uh, so anyway, I'm gonna stop rambling. Hope you're having a good Sunday. Thank you for the new subscribers. Do pray you're all doing well. And until next time, bye.